Welcome back to the channel. So here we've got something a little bit different, um, both in model form and the way the video is filmed. So this is uh, quite old footage, what you're looking at, most notably through the blue paper, uh, which is when I started this kit and now I've finished it and you'll see the switch to white paper later on in the video. So this is how I used to do videos back in the day and I'm just sort of talking along as I build it. So it's a bit different to how we do it now, but here we are. This is the Resin Lab a Trubia Naval in 135th scale that I had sent over way back in uh, when the pandemic was on from Spain. Okay, so I've made a start here on the Trubia Naval. Um, I've got one of the blocks off of one of the uh, runs of tracks. Um, what I'm using is a razor saw and water and that keeps the dust down and stops me having to wear a mask. But if uh, I start to see the dust coming on, then I do put a mask on, so I, I don't take any risk. Trouble with resin is you get all this sort of dust like that and you don't want to be breathing that in. So always be blowing away, clearing the um, desk, not taking lots of you know big deep breaths and if at all worried, wear a mask. Now um, I'm just looking at this turret and I think where we've got this little bit here, I was thinking that there was actually a plate there to lift it up but after looking at some um, uh, reference pictures that is sitting a little bit too high I don't I can't see that in any of the references it should be more like um, well and it's not even as well so I do think that's actually a uh, uh, needs to be sanded down a little bit so that's simple enough to do and I'll um, show you how we do that in a minute um, first thing as well uh, we've got running down here we've got like little um, brackets I suppose on the side fenders. So I've taken those out and just been cutting them with a scriber. So this is a the trumpeter scriber which has got a blade on the end. It's very useful. Just going down like that to get them out. Uh, flicking them away and just generally cleaning that area up like that. There we go. It's just sort of gouging. And there's plenty of resin there. So you don't need to worry about going through it or anything. So I cleared that one side up and then that means that we then can get that in there nice and tight and the track goes under the fenders on both sides. So that's good, when we push that up it's all sorted. So that's it simple enough and that looks pretty good there. So I think the um, hole in the running gear is actually pretty much um, almost sorted, a little bit of clean up, I need to sand um, the fenders straight. Um, I've cut off as much as I can using a blade and then I just need to go down this side get rid of that block as well and actually just saw that off and that is as I was saying just running down there with a razor saw nice and wet keeping it all moist and then that's the the main bits done so um, the real issue here is just sanding that back we've got um, a few air bubbles you get this again in resin you can't do anything about it um, it just happens occasionally uh, and all you do here is just remold that with a bit of super glue. So once I've sanded this back, fill that with super glue and just sand that and get that rim back in and you won't even notice it. And most of those, just push them. I want to get the hole if it's going to happen. I want it to happen before I fill it. No, they're okay. So there's enough resin there holding it. A um, few bubbles underneath here. None of them are an issue. There's none where we're actually going to see it. So that's another thing just to look out for. You, you want to try and make the hole and fill it before you have to worry about anything else. And as this is one block, I think we can get it all on, even the turret, and actually then wash it as one piece. So we'll stick it in a sink of soapy water and literally give it a good scrub of a toothbrush and that will get any release agent off and get us ready to uh, prime it. The best way I've found to flatten off an area like this is to make a sanding stick quite wet especially one if it's sponge and rigid, so these floury versions are quite good. And then you just kind of circle motions. This isn't quite big enough, but if you've got one like twice as wide, you could just go circle motions and you'll make sure you'll keep it flat. Now the thing with resin is uh, you can cut into it quite easily, especially if you've got a high grit. So you want to keep checking, less is more. You want to do this over a time and um, you know make sure you don't take too much off because it's very easy to. And you want to then keep checking um, how it's all looking and you haven't gone too far into it because you know you could easily cut up into the turret in this section scenario but you want to keep checking so uh, 
There's a good little way of doing it and I'm nearly there now so um, I'll just keep doing this a little bit more and then we'll be on to the next section. Okay, so there wasn't much to uh, mention. Uh, there's a little bit been done here, but um, you, there wasn't much to be filmed, to be honest. So I've just gone through the panel lines, added in some of the small details that I'm not gonna knock off when we wash it. Place these, um, these uh, sort of guide eyes for the hooks as well, the towing hooks. Um, checked the panel lines as well, just with a little bit of flory wash. It's quite good for that, just rubbing it in there. You can see that we're all right around there and it's all okay. I've put the guns in now as well because they're simple enough to do. So we've got those two and um, I'm going to leave it all off and then just wash these four major parts. And then we've just got a few small things, um, some sort of like uh, eyelet hoop towing guides there and um, a couple of pickaxes and a shovel which I may or may not use, not sure. That was usually tied up um, here. So it was put there and tied to it. I think I might just leave it off. It looks like when it was actually in use, they, they were lost pretty quickly. Um, so that's everything there. We've also got the lights as well, and I'll wash those while they're still on the block. So that's in soapy water, and that's to get rid of the release agent. And then we're pretty much ready to um, get into primer and then that will show up whether we need to do any more work because there's a little bit of texture in here which I'm hoping we can get away with so we'll see what the primer shows. Okay so we are now had a good old wash all the small bits that fell off have been glued back on and I've just put one side in now super glue and um, the main thing sorry if there's a lot of noise I've got to get the window open because I'm using accelerator so we we'll just have to bear with that I'm afraid it's very noisy where I live. Um, so to level up the tracks, um, you want to just make sure they're sort of straight. Not that you're going to be building this, but you know, we're just talking through it, aren't we? Um, so it would be very easy to get them to sort of bend inwards, but we want to get them out. So that's the main thing I'm doing. And if you just kind of pull on it, it seems to be pretty level then. Um, just checking that that isn't actually in. Use a metal ruler, square it up I think. Where's the square edge? It's just there's a little bit of, there's a tiny little bit of play, you see that? And you wouldn't want to glue it in like that. You want to glue it out like that. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, I'm gonna leave, we could glue the turret on, but I'm gonna leave that off while we're painting. Just for ease. So we've got one whole bit like this. So as we're gonna glue this, it's this side. So I just run a tiny bit of glue down the back there and before it sets just make sure we're up high enough so that the track disappears and out enough at the back so we're just doing the back bit and then with the accelerator don't want to breathe this in so I like to just do that out the window very tiny amount it's actually now now it's on that's when you don't want to breathe it in this um, reaction that's happening lets off fumes it's not great it's not good at all actually. So that should set up the back and that looks pretty straight. You start to see it crystallise. What do you think it's doing? And it, it makes it solid, it goes all sort of white. And then we can then shore up the front. So we still got a bit of manoeuvrability at the front here. It's a good amount of super glue because it's all that's holding it. Make sure it's out and straight. And then holding that accelerator just means it goes off a lot quicker. And we don't need to sit there holding it for ages. So as we're just setting now, you just grab it, pull it out. And I can see this side I'm doing now is actually very straight. So that will show up if the other side isn't. And we should still have a, a moment to be able to sort that. Right, so that's that. So what we don't want is it sort of angling in. Like, we don't want it going like... We want them to be like that instead of like, I can't do it. <laughs> you know what I mean? It could angle in like this instead of being straight. I think it's an optical illusion. I think it's fine. I think it's because of the way the track goes away. It makes your eye look like it's, uh, makes your eye look like, makes you feel like it's bending inwards. You see what I mean? Because you're not looking square, so it looks like this is going in, and then you make that straight, 
It looks like that's going in, but I don't think either of them are. I think that's okay. Right, I'm going to check that now. Um, if it is an issue, uh, I would just sort of try and break it off again through the super glue and rejoin it. Um, I think it's fine. And then um, we're going to be into primer. So I'm going to be using uh, just some of this. And then that's when we'll know what's what on here. So um, it's really hard to say what's going to be you know, any imperfections, because it's very hard to see on the actual resin, so until you get the primer in, that will show everything up. So, uh, we'll get that done, let that dry off, and that will be the next step. So, fast forward now, uh, two and a half years, maybe? Two years, something like that. Uh, longer than it should have been. We've not really moved on very far, although I had uh, added some primer, so this is Mr. Surfacer has gone on here, just to kind of have a look at a few uh, aspects, see how it looks see what we think about it, and uh, if we need to do any fixing before we start getting into the painting. Now, the first thing that was pointed out, I run a Facebook group dedicated to modelling uh, subjects from the Spanish Civil War called the Spanish Civil War Modelling Group, um, which is linked to my IPMS special interest group that is based in the UK. And in there, when I posted it up, there's a lot of uh, Spanish people and uh, chaps who are very interested in the history around the Spanish Civil War, and someone pointed out that those uh, bolts on the side of the fender don't line up with the bracket. So I do actually remove them. Here I'm showing that my idea was not to remove them, but I did in the end. So cut them off, move them. Also drilled out the gun barrels a little bit and left it there, really. So straightened the paint. Again, a little bit of um, an afterthought, the filming of this. So what I did was paint this with a uh, base coat of Tamiya, uh, it was XF65 field grey, just a, ra you know, a random sort of green, and then went over with those MRP colours that you just saw, did a mix of the two, and... Uh, oh, actually, there we go, olive green, XF58 is the base colour, and then the two MRP colours over the top... Well, there we go, XF73 as well, who knows, one of those colours, I painted it green and then um, use the MRP straight over it. Now, I'm gonna go back over with the base coat, and that's what I'm doing here. I'm imagining this was 73, XF73. It doesn't look like 58. And uh, what I'm doing here is just toning down the camouflage by using the base coat really as a filter. Nothing special. You can do it with olive, uh, olive? <laughs> olive oil. You can do it with oil paints, uh, or you can do it with enamel washes, or you can do it with the paint that you used. It's just a light dusting, which really is a filter in the in the general sense of how you filter something. You're looking through the base colour and it tones it down. So nothing special here, straight on with a dust wash. This is an enamel dust wash from Ammo. Straight in uh, some mixed up odourless thinners and put all over it. Now, this is some, I like to do some of my weathering a little bit quick in places when I've got a model where it's not going to really matter. Uh, this is a table model that goes on a little base and it will look absolutely fine. So what I'm doing is building up a wet area, like you can see here, using the enamel wash, and then using pigments, I just put them on quite heavily and let the, ena the wet enamel wash grab hold of those pigments. And then if I want a little bit of a heavier deposit, then I'll go back on with some of that enamel wash and wet up the dry parts of the pigment that you can see. You can see where it's wetting as well because it always goes darker. And that's kind of binding the pigment in. Then when it all dries off, it has a very subtle effect. Here, uh, I didn't want to wait until it was dry and just leave it as it was. I've actually got this brush now, a nice wide flat brush, and I'm using that just to brush the uh, pigment into areas so it sort of heavily recesses it, if you see what I mean. As in, it's caked on dusty sort of look uh, and it's a really effective um, way of doing it I think if you want to work fast it's not going to win any awards but that's not the point of these models and not the point of most of my models so uh, just to get it on into the finish line and get it ready for the table because this one's going to be on the table at uh, Scale Model World Telford 2023 this is what I wanted to do and you can see now as it's drying back you're starting to see some of that effect and in the photos that are quickly about to appear you'll be able to see how it actually looks when it's all done. So very simple, uh, these small little tanks of a, a, a not well-known period and conflict 
very interesting little subjects and something I, I like to do more of. Now, some kits are available more than others. Um, I've got this one and I've got the Trubia A4 as well, which I am actually building currently. Very unusual little tanks. Basically, they were armoured bits of metal, sheet metal, put around tractors, Lanzia tractors at the time, and um, made into makeshift tanks. So hopefully this is something a little bit different. Uh, I haven't seen one of these built on, on uh, YouTube so far, so there we are. As I said, I'll be exhibiting at Scale Model World UK, uh, the UK Nationals at Telford. So if you are around, come and have a look at the IPMS Spanish Civil War Special Interest Group, where you'll see some of my builds and this one in particular on there. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for enjoying some of these odd little uh, tanks and subjects that I put on the channel. Stay tuned and I'll see you in the next video.